Berlin. Thanks, guys. Uh, great to be here again. Uh, this is my third time. Uh, actually being and speaking uh, here. Always love coming to Paris um, and talking uh, to all you guys. So uh, Weebly, uh, for those who don't know, um, we're the easy, sorry, uh, easiest platform for you to build uh, or create a website, blog, or store. Uh, today I'm going to be focusing on store uh, as you, know, you want a really easy solution to sell many of your products. Um, and at the moment, we power 30 million, over 30 million entrepreneurs who use Weebly every day to build their business. I'm just going to show you a video of one of our, one of our users. We like to think that our customers wear their heart on their wrist. They're very sentimental pieces. So you're not just selling material, you're selling a story, you're selling someone's memory. My name is Anya. My name is Rosie. We uh, saw a company called Whistle and Bango about two years ago when we lived together in our first flat. Our range of postcode bangles pick the most popular parts of London. Shoreditch would be E1. We put the first part of the postcode embossed onto a bangle. Chelsea would be SW3. I think the next stages of development for this. We saw an opportunity to be able to create a brand, put it online for almost no cost. Genius. Yeah, that's, that's so good. We just took small steps, one step at a time. And then when you get your first sale, you think, oh my gosh, this is actually working. This is a small business. My commute into work, I use every single second to be on my phone, to answer customers. In our generation, it is not just acceptable but needed to have an instant response. Weebly's app is just so easy to use. We've sent quite a few bangles to America, Germany, Canada. Places which we had no idea would ever find us. I would say 80% of our revenue comes from our Weebly shop. We can control what looks like quite a big business from our homes and our phones. It's just amazing what kind of inspiration and culture you can get from walking around the streets of London. I imagine us in the not-so-distant future to have a team of people working with us to try and propel us into a global brand. So great site. I mean, those are two of our users from the UK, Anya and Rosa. Uh, started with Weebly a couple of years ago uh, with Whistle and Bango. They actually now um, do sales, and a lot of their sales are now across Europe, so not just the UK. Thanks for joining us, and welcome to our Beginner's Guide to Weebly webinar. I'm Erin. So um, that just goes to show, you know, how our platform helps you not just stay within your city, your town, or your country, even um, how you can go global with that. Um, and there's really two main reasons. But one of the first ones is that you really want a credible experience. Um, people go to a website, it makes you more credible. Uh, people want to find you from a lot of different locations, and namely Google. Um, so that's a key reason of having, having a website, and why websites, even today with all mobile apps, are still very, very relevant. Um, the second reason is that you know, people want to create a brand, and that brand is not just analog now. That brand isn't what you see and what you're, you're advertising. It's actually a brand that lives online. Um, and with a lot of our customers, like uh, Whistle & Bango, they actually started off as, an, uh, as a blog and not a product. So it gives you that flexibility to grow from a blog to an online shop, and it's worked pretty well for a lot of our customers. We kind of at Weebly focus on three main things, and we think that these are the three main problems that stops people uh, from kind of bringing offline onto online being a shop. So one of the main things that we do is everybody wants a really great, good-looking, stunning website. Um, and you also want it to look good on any device that you're on. So whether you're on the laptop, whether you're visiting from a mobile device, or now even wearable devices. Uh, so we try to have 20 responsive themes that make it really, really easy um, and beautiful. 
The second is the ability to add products. So we allow people to add products, inventory management, um, and really make that process as simple as possible. So really drag drop, um, getting the products up there. And then the third is be mobile. So a lot of you guys uh, are probably on your mobile right now, um, or you every day, you know, go from one device to the other. So the fact that you actually want to be mobile um, and run your business on the go, um, now customers aren't just kind of running their business from their PC anymore. They're running it from a multitude of devices and they want information, um, sales, and what's happening with your business, really daily visibility every single day. So this is really the first screen that you'd come to once you've signed up using Weebly. And again, I spoke about how the theme is so important. So here we break it down in a couple of categories to help you really pick the best design for you. So if you're a business, if you're an online store, if you want to have a personal portfolio, this will augment the 22 uh, mobile responsive themes, as I mentioned before, to what that might look like. It leaves it very flexible. You're not uh, limited to the, the content there, but this just helps you get started and helps you imagine what your content's going to look like when you use it. The next is going into the site. Once you've picked your theme, um, you're going to look at the site editor. So this is where the magic happens. Um, we have hundreds of elements um, on the left hand side and with that it's really just a simple drag and drop most of our customers um, who experience it uh, recall that it's kind of the same as using PowerPoint and dragging and dropping uh, an image or, or text it's, it's that simple and then we also have layouts so that kind of gives you a little helping hand on what layouts are going to work best for your products so whether you're doing a team page whether you're setting out products in a kind of staggered uh, sense, that's going to obviously be the one for you. Coming to the st store dashboard, so this looks at when you're actually ready to insert a product uh, of any nature, this is going to be where you do it. So here, as you can see, you can add a store page, you can add individual or group products, um, you can add extra information, and also this is where you'll also access the several payment options that we offer uh, in France and multiple other countries. Adding product, uh, so the add product page is very simple. Here is when you put your details in for the product. You can add things like images, sell digital or physical goods, uh, and set the price in several um, different um, dominations. So as launching in uh, Europe last year, we added multiple uh, payment options, and obviously for France having Euro. Here we see that we've edited the product, we've got price, we've got a sale price, and we've added some cute little pictures of our teddy bears um, in wh what you can sell. So this is just showing you, again, how easy it is to add variations, short descriptions, and different tiers of pricing should you want to do promotions uh, or actual prices. And then this is what really the finished uh, article looks like. So adding a product, uh, we've got a great picture, a great description to the right-hand side, and we've also added it to our payment options, which at the moment are Stripe and PayPal. Going into uh, the manager and uh, obviously checking out, we've got different uh, services that we provide. So our good friends at Stripe, who will be talking later today, uh, where we have one-click integration. So as soon as you click, you type in a couple of details and connect your Stripe account, and you can now start accepting payments. And also PayPal uh, is our second most popular one, um, where you know everyone here has probably got a PayPal account, is very much used to how PayPal works. And this is what we find is a very easy alternative to credit card payments. Looking at the order confirmation, so you know, selling a product is one thing, but again, your customers are going to want to know, has, has it actually been confirmed when it's coming? We actually automate this process, and it's all customizable. So this allows you to, A, give a very nice uh, kind of message once someone's confirmed and bought your product. And then also you can change and edit things like billing information uh, and a bunch of other details that you'll see in, in invoices. Looking at 
kind of the functionality that we give on uh, Weebly. So you can do a million and one things on Weebly, but for things that you can't do and for added functionality, uh, we developed our own app store, uh, App Center. So we, we now have over 100 apps uh, in our App Center, from customer service apps to marketing automation. And these are really the things that you, you kind of need to do with an online store, uh, but you necessarily probably need, need a little bit of help. So if you think about SEO, for example, um, if you're not an SEO expert, there's apps on there that automate some of that process for you. The same is uh, for Simple Chat. So Simple Chat is actually a Weebly uh, built app that helps you to communicate with your customers who are visiting your site. So kind of those uh, annoying pop-ups uh, that you normally got on Amazon and other big businesses, you can now have that same functionality uh, with your smaller businesses. And we connect it via the mobile phone. So every time somebody's on your site, somebody wants to talk to you, uh, it'll actually come through on your mobile device as a text message, which is pretty cool. And then looking at the dashboard. So again, I mentioned the third step, uh, other than kind of get products uh, and pick how your website's going to look, is all about managing it and managing it on the go. So this is really the dashboard that helps you look at stats in real time. Um, here you can see you know, how many stats, who's coming through on the website, how much money are you making, which is really important sometimes. Um, and then also from Simple Chat or other third-party app integrations, it's going to show you um, what kind of information is coming from that in real time. So here we can see that you know, 752 chats per week. We can see the average time and we can kind of uh, you know, make, make it better over time. From here, um, I also said that you know mobile is a really big thing for us. So nowadays, you know, people, as I mentioned before, aren't doing everything on the laptop. So with Weebly uh, and both of our apps on iOS and Android, you can actually create a website on the phone with the same experience that I mentioned uh, online. So with the same drag and drop functionality, uh, you can go from nothing to having a website um, and, and collecting payments as an e-line e um, e-commerce store. And the same dashboard, the same stats uh, that you'll see on it, that you're getting information in real time is the same from the phone, which is really an, an important step from micro-entrepreneurs who it might, for some of you guys, be a side business or a side hustle. Uh, you can still have full visibility on your business. That is the end of my presentation. Uh, and Anto, our country manager for France, will join me uh, in Q&A if you've got any. Hello. Um, your project looks really cool, but I would like to know what's the difference with Shopify. Um, so first, we're, um, we're focused on micro-entrepreneurs. So we really want like the simplest interface, the simplest platform. And the second big thing is we officially launched in France in October. So that means you have a customer support in French, community management in French, everything is localized for France, which I think is not the case for other uh, US companies. How does your drag and drop functionality work? Is it like, is it a grid system where it automatically adapts, like Squarespace basically? How do you compare it to that? I think it's as easy as any, like, it's best in class, so it's the easiest way and the, the fastest way to drag and drop. I would add to that. So our, our drag to drop functionality, as opposed to Squarespace, is is what it says in the Tim. So it's actually the dragging and dropping of the elements from the left hand side to this page. Um, I think Squarespace actually locks it in, um, so you can add elements, but you can bring it from the cursor. Ours is actually from the element page to the left, actually dragging to where you want it to go, and it adapts to where where the space and white space that you've got available to the website. Just a question about uh, selling services, not products. Um, does it work well? Like in, let's say if I want to like uh, just like show cla uh, sell classes and like fill the classes up to many people, like X people. Does it work well? Can we set up that in, in Webly? It does, yeah. So there are, there are unlimited um, spaces for digital products. Um, in our premium uh, product, you can you can have as many many people as possible to sign up for classes. Um, it's not just for products. So the main thing is from a physical product, which is great, uh, but also from a service or digital based business. If you're providing the classes online um, and you want to sell that through, it, it works in the same way. And a second one linked to that: um, Is it easy to transfer to migrate from a WordPress to Weebly? 
because I already have one. So it, it's right. something that everybody's trying to work uh, on in the space. Um, so with that, you know, in in terms of kind of the um, exporting uh, to another one, it's a tool that we're uh, we're trying to build. Um, but at the moment, it, it is kind of a manual self serve uh, from a WordPress to to a Weebly. Um, the, other cool feature on Weebly is once you're in Weebly and you pick kind of a theme, uh, you're not limited to that theme. You can change it any one time and your content and assets rem remain with the website. Hi. Um, I would like to know if you have enough functionality or if is it planned in the future. Um, do you have uh, uh, marketplaces uh, um, implemented? Sure, good question. Um, so with the Apps Center, um, that has really been our first foray into uh, kind of what a marketplace might look like. So at the moment, we have kind of over 100 apps of third-party developers. So developers that we're not developing the apps, other people are that might help uh, with you guys. Um, in terms of where that goes next, um, a marketplace definitely seems likely um, once we add um, certain functionality for that. But that's definitely a, a future goal. Do you have a time frame? Uh, time frame, no, not not yet. Not that we can share, anyway. Thank you. Uh, is it easy to build a multilingual website? Yeah, so um, it's a very good question. So we sent a survey to our users uh, recently because we're, we're building it, so it's in the pipe, so we are going to release it. Um, I, I can't share the time frame, but it's top priority for our new European markets. So it's going to be automated as easy as the whole web experience. Hi, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have one question. I heard that Weebly business model is mostly based on resellers, it means that uh, agencies and freelancers uh, resell uh, your uh, products. Is that right? Do you have any metrics to communicate to, to us? Or, okay, can you tell us more about that, please? Um, so we have an organic growth model and direct, like not really resellers. So the interesting thing is that we started uh, spending um, paid advertising like two years ago only because everything was organic. So it was word of mouth, etc. Not really resellers. So we do have a product for resellers, but that's not one of our main like distribution channels. So yeah, I don't know what you, where you heard this, but I'm, I'm happy to. Because, merci. Just yeah. because the, the other do-it-yourself solution like Squarespace or Wix uh, have a, a very important resellers plans and so that was just my question because uh, the resellers have more options, they can uh, touch to the code and uh, I mean have more options and more uh, possibilities than the uh, traditional uh, small and medium uh, users, you know? Yeah, small sure. Companies. So we're more direct and we have a community of micro entrepreneurs. But okay. yeah, we do work with resellers sometimes. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, is it possible to do a one click purchase with, uh, with Weebly or is something like Amazon is something which is, uh, which is copyrighted by Amazon today? So, um, yeah, it's a good question. So it's not yet possible for one reason is, uh, one of the main reasons is there's the law Amazon in France. So unless you comply with all the requirements that Amazon comply with, you can't do one click. You have to go through three different steps and to be legally compliant that we're, we're compliant with. So not yet, but we're thinking about it. Um, hi, so I actually just got off the train um, to Paris um, from London. We launched here about a month or so ago. Um, and I want to just talk to you a bit about up here here and how we're empowering ideas um, and how we're making them happen. So I wanted to first sort of start with a video. Having a good idea is easy. Making it happen. That's hard. So ask yourself, what did you make today? You wake up, you work hard, you do it again. Because it takes everything you've got to bring an idea to life. But there's a magic in having something that's yours like that. Something you've built. Something that's a piece of you. And along the way, you'll make mistakes. 
so make them count. You'll have your late nights, your lonely days, your fair share of letdowns, but they won't stop you. Because all great ideas came from nothing. They started inside, inside your head, your heart, your garage, but inside is only so big. Out there, there's opportunity. There's space to show the world what your idea can do. Give your ideas the space to grow, and anything's possible. You're here. Space for ideas. All right, so what do we mean by space for ideas? Well, you heard from Weebly before, um, and they help you make your idea happen online. We help you make your idea happen offline. So we connect um, brands and retailers, e-commerce companies, and entrepreneurs with great spaces to really make their ideas happen. So the spaces that we have on our platform range from high street shops, um, main streets um, in your local districts, to sort of innovative solutions, like in the UK we have Box Park. Um, we're looking at a couple of innovative ones here as well in Paris that are similar. Um, we have luxury locations like Burlington Arcade, um, Saint Honoré here, um, as well as partnerships with big retailers. So one that's most interesting to me in the UK is our partnership with Topshop. Um, and we manage the concessions for them in their Oxford Street location, which has the most footfall of any of the top shops um, across the world, and, and now have a global relationship with Topshop as well. And all of this is booked through our website. So instead of having the hassle of um, working through brokers, it's all done online, both bookings, payments, legals, all of that. Um, and as you heard before, we make it as easy to book space as it is to book a hotel room. So in many cases, our inspiration has come from models like an Airbnb, bringing that to the retail world. So is this something that's disruptive? And we certainly think it is. Um, and part of that reason is actually because our founder, when he started this a few years ago, um, he thought about what it was like when he was born in 1992. So he's pr pretty young. <laughs> but in 1992, the average lease length was actually 20 years. Um, and today, it's less than five years. So lease lengths have decreased um, over time pretty significantly. But the process for booking space hasn't changed at all. So there's many intermediaries, lots of fees involved, lots of time and confusion that can make it really hard, especially for a smaller brand and entrepreneur like many of you in the room, um, to really book a space and make the idea happen offline. Um, so we've kind of sought to, to change that problem. Um, instead of booking a space that it historically took between three to six months, on our platform, on average, it takes between three to six days to book a space. Um, and actually, last month, over 50% of our um, bookings occurred within 48 hours. And not to brag, but our record so far is 10 minutes. Um, so we feel pretty good about the ability con to connect entrepreneurs to space and help them with a tool to make it happen really quickly. Um, in the past 12 months alone, we've connected 1,500 brands with spaces. Um, and through our lifetime on our platform in the past few years, we've, we've opened about 20, uh, 2,500 stores, launching 2,500 ideas. And right now, have over 3,000 years worth of ideas on our platform waiting to connect to space. And we're working to solve um, problems for all of our entrepreneurs. Um, I said we work with a lot of entrepreneurs, but we also work with lots of big brands as well. So brands like Nike and Google use our space as much as sort of up and coming entrepreneurs like the ones that you saw in our video. Um, and now just a, a couple of examples of some of the brands that use appear here. Um, we find that brands use appear here for four main reasons. The first is to test a new market. Um, maybe it's their first store, um, maybe they're trying a new area or location, even a new city. Um, like, for example, moving from Paris to London or London to Paris, as we've seen most recently. A nice example from this is um, Press London, uh, which is a juice company in London. They launched with a market stall with us in Old Street Station, uh, which is a, a station which we'll talk about later, but a tube station in London. Um, they found out that they were selling out of juice rather quickly. 
Um, so have since moved from a market stall to now three full-time shops in Paris, or sorry, in London, um, as well as a concession within Selfridge's department store. The second reason why brands, big and small, use appear here is to connect to a moment. Um, so I like to talk about Jamie Oliver, who's worked with us on many different shops. Um, one most interesting one, actually, was for a part of his TV show that he was doing called Drinks Tube. Um, and he launched a pop-up called Request Week, in which they took requests through social media and created those cocktails and filmed, filmed the process doing so. Um, they had 75 million tweets throughout the week where they were open in Old Street Station. The third reason why people are using us is to create an experience. Um, so something interesting we had recently through our platform is the, the brand or the show Homeland um, booking a space for us as opposed to buying advertising space. So they thought it would be more interesting to engage with customers um, as opposed to, again, buying ad space and sort of pushing the message that they were launching a new DVD. Um, and so what they did instead is they had CIA operatives dressed in costume um, doing lie detector tests on both famous people um, within London as well as just people walking down the street. They got a lot of engagement through that and used that as the way to tell the message of their new DVD and their new show. The last reason, which actually maybe ties nicely with some of the Weebly presentation, is to connect offline and offline, offline and online. Um, so we have a lot of online and e-commerce companies looking to test offline and create real-world relationships with their customers. Um, one example that I love is Surfdom, which is one of the largest um, European lifestyle brands. Um, what they did is they created a pop-up for two weeks with us um, in which they had yoga classes, talks, um, movie screenings, independent filmmakers, and really engaged with the community there. And they saw a lift in traffic to their site as well as sales to their e-commerce site, both, before, uh, both during and after um, the launch of their shop. Another interesting example is List. Um, which is the world's largest um, marketplace for fashion. Um, they actually took over shops during Fashion Week and put, used them for fly posts instead of buying billboard space. Um, so it was actually cheaper for them to buy stores and take them over as opposed to buying traditional billboards. And they were also in sort of more interesting areas, so areas where there's maybe high footfall, um, where there's a lot of fashion people. And they tied into Fashion Week by having um, images of um, people from the fashion community and their top customers in all of their fly posts. Now, who's on the other end of our marketplace? They're the landlords. Um, people that you guys might not have much experience with, and you don't necessarily have to through our platform. Um, but we've created um, great relationships with all of the biggest landlords in the UK. Um, we've been building relationships in France as well, and actually have just signed the biggest um, landlord in Paris. Um, and we'll be expanding our spaces in Paris and in all of France. So we have about 1,500 spaces on our platform in the UK, about 100 or so um, in Paris, and 200 or so within full of France. Um, and some of our landlords we actually have pretty deep partnerships with. So I mentioned before Old Street Station. Um, that came through a partnership that we have with TFL, um, your, uh, uh, the UK's equivalent of SNCF here. Um, so we have a relationship with them. We've helped redesign some of, their train, uh, some of the tube stations. And with Old Street, which was their sort of worst performing station, we brought in over 250 ideas in the past couple of years. 80% of them are from independent brands. And the nice thing about it is it's not only changed Old Street and built more interesting experiences um, for everyone passing through, but it's a great opportunity for brands, big and small, to have an engaged audience. Um, so this is actually the place where the Deuce Company that I mentioned earlier has set up shop and was kind of how they launched their brand. But we have brands small, like the juice company I mentioned, as well as Spoon Cereals, to big global brands like Moleskin and most recently Adidas um, that have taken over shops um, within Old Street. But ultimately, our biggest aim is to build a global network of spaces. So starting with London and the UK, next Paris and all France, hopefully in the future um, the States. Um, but really, we're trying to connect brands with any spaces all over the world so that anyone with an idea can make it happen no matter where they want to be. And just a little bit about, about what we've been called. So um, we mentioned earlier the Airbnb of retail, um, but really trying to make it easier for brands big and small to launch their ideas. Hello. Uh, I think it's a great product. Um, I would like to know how deep uh, can you go in terms of 
recommendations? I mean, is it everything online or do you have like uh, advisors, uh, let's say that you're yep. launching a brand but you don't really know where it should be, uh, mm -hmm. if it's like a small uh, shop or, or bigger, uh, I don't know. Yeah, so all of our spaces are listed on the platform. Um, we have some interesting search capability on our platform as well. And we also have destination guides for all different areas within London, the UK, and Paris. Um, but kind of unique to us is that we have a team of concierge. Uh, so concierge, they're all based in the UK, but we have two dedicated French concierge um, before we move them over to um, Paris and our new office here. Um, so they'll be able to sort of handhold a little bit more, help you learn about the different areas, learn about our spaces, maybe what's worked in them in the past, and can give you a lot more guidance. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for your presentation. I have a question. I would like to know if it's possible sometimes to negotiate the price of the rents for some, loca for some location, because um, um, I used to check your website, and sometimes uh, the rent looks like it's a little bit expensive, and I would like to know if... Uh, if uh, you have um, the possibility to uh, just negotiate? I mean, it's not really up to us since we're sort of the platform as opposed to owning the real estate. Um, but it's something that um, we can talk, we can go back to the landlord if we feel like it's an unfair price. Um, but we've tried to work with landlords to get exclusive pricing for our platform as much as possible. Um, so if there is a specific place that you're interested in or specific space, you can definitely email us um, and we can get in touch to see if there's a better rate. Hello, thank you for the presentation. Uh, sounds great. I have two questions first. Is there a minimum length of staying in a space? Or it can be like overnight or? There, there's no minimum f uh, across the board. Um, some landlords will have minimums, but usually we have anything from a night or a day um, to up to one to two years. Thank you. And second question, um, do you have to be the, the owner of the space to put it on a peer, or can you be like the, the renter and put it on, online? Um, I mean, so, I have a space so and I don't use it one day. Do you want to do a shop share yeah. sort of thing? Something. Um, Something like that. Let's say I have a space and I don't use it on Sunday. Yeah. Is it possible to put it on Sunday online? Yes, there is. So we actually do shop shares, which is what we call that sort of agreement, um, where we have brands list of space on the platform, um, either if they want to sort of sublet a piece of their space, so maybe a coffee shop wants to sublease a rail um, all the time, or someone who doesn't use their space all week long and wants to sublease it for a certain day. Um, how was the um, you know, pop-up store like concept received in France compared to the UK? Uh, do people know pop-up stores in France? Yeah, so we found that people definitely know pop-up stores here. The, it seems like the length of pop-up stores tend to be a bit shorter in France than in the UK. Okay. So in the UK, we'll have everything from, as I said, you know, up to a year of a pop-up or even six months, uh, a six-month-long pop-up. Where in France, what we learned early on is that a lot of um, brands are doing you know, one day, one week, or a weekend long pop-up, something much shorter. Um, so there's a bit of education to say, hey, this doesn't need to be um, a night or a weekend long thing. It could be um, up to a year. So that's the biggest piece of education. But it seems um, in general that there is knowledge of the pop-up concepts and it's growing in popularity in France. Um, and that on the demand side, we haven't had um, difficulty signing up brands. Yeah, thanks for the presentation. Uh, what made you choose France after the UK? Yep. So um, our goal, as I mentioned, is to build a global network of retail spaces, starting with the top retail cities in the world. Um, so for us, France and Paris seemed like a logical next step after the UK because of its proximity to our headquarters, and then also the fact that we really think it's the best retail city in the world. Um, so we launched with Paris Fashion Week. Um, we actually took our own pop-up um, and brought a bunch of brands from both the UK and from France, um, gave them space in the Marais um, during Fashion Week, um, sort of as a stand um, to sort of show our support for, for retail in Paris. Thanks. Okay, hi everyone, good to be back here. Um, so I'm Guillaume, I'm uh, leading Stripe in France and Southern Europe. Um, and uh, we're going to, so just a, maybe a quick reminder um, for s those of you for whom it's a reminder. Stripe is a, um, a software platform for building uh, internet businesses of any size. Um, we're mostly known for uh, payments, um, so we basically enable any company of any size on the internet, on mobile, whatever, to accept payments and to sell products and services on the internet. Um, but this, and so we, today we work with, like we transact um, billions of 
dollars every year. Um, we work with companies like Facebook, like Twitter, like Slack, like Pinterest, and Salesforce, um, and many other companies in Europe um, and France as well. But we're not going to talk about this today because um, I was told that people kind of know about Stripe. So I'm going to tell you about a product that we launched a month ago uh, that's called Atlas. Um, and what I want to do is first um, explain the why. Like, why did we launch this? Because it's actually pretty important to kind of get the, the bigger picture. And then we'll get into it. And like everybody else, I also have a video. Um, so, um, so Stripe's aim since the beginning is kind of to grow the GDP of the internet. Uh, that, what that really means is um, Stripe is trying to help companies get off the ground and new businesses get off the ground on the internet and on mobile. Okay, In our way, right? We do payments, but we've also been thinking a little bit beyond payments. And um, this is the world. Um, and the internet's promise since the beginning was to kind of make the world borderless, right? And that has been a success from a kind of communication perspective. Like sending packets of data across the world today is pretty easy on the internet. That's actually what the internet does. So that's great. That's the first step. But um, when you think about commerce on the internet, actually selling stuff on the internet, the internet is still extremely local. So the internet, the commerce on the internet actually looks more like this than the previous world map. Um, and the reason for that, the reasons for that are, I guess, pretty obvious. Um, and they're actually mostly related to, so logistics is a piece, localization is a piece, but also payments is a big piece of it because um, various currencies, because various financial systems that are very often pretty national. And so people in Japan sell to Japanese uh, people in Italy sell to Italians, et cetera, et cetera. And that kind of repeats itself all over the world. And so we're trying to, we're actually like, we're trying to break those borders on the, for internet commerce. And so today we're present, we can support um, merchants or internet businesses in 24 countries that are in white right here. But the problem is that kind of leaves away more than 170 countries. And so there's, there's actually a whole part of the world population, um, and I'm not saying we're the only ones that can help, but that's, that actually more generally doesn't have access to basic internet infrastructural tools to build a global business. What I mean by that is today, if you, you, know, you, can, you can learn you know, Ruby on Rails in Sri Lanka, right? However, building a global business from Sri Lanka today is complex because you don't have access to AWS tools, for example. You don't have access to tools like Stripe or others, by the way, to kind of have a global audience, right? And there are so many products out there that are day one that should be global. So what those people actually end up doing, because there are very talented people in all those you know, 170 countries, what they end up doing is they end up building a product that they start selling for free to kind of get a global audience because they just can't sell it technically because they don't have the tools available for them in those countries. So that's the first step what they do. The second step they do is, hey, I maybe need to kind of start a company in a, you know, in a market that you know, kind of provides me those tools. Um, and so there they go and start months and sometimes years of processes to kind of set up a company in the US, in Europe, in Japan, in Singapore, or whatever. And that's kind of, we, we, we're looking at that. We looked at that and we actually talked to users who did that to get, get access to Stripe, for example, uh, in Europe or in the US. And we looked at that and we thought, well, you know, maybe we could try to make that a little more simpler for people who want to start global businesses without you know, needing to go to the US to understand the entire like, legal system to set up an entity to discuss with banks or et cetera, et cetera. Um, and what I'd like to do here is, um, since we all like videos, I'd just like to show a video of a user that actually talks about like his pain. I think he, so he was from the Middle East. His pain of kind of going through a whole complex process to be able to actually launch and get paid for his product um, like globally. This is short. Instabug is a platform for mobile developers to help them build better apps. 
and the reaction from the global mobile developers around the world was just amazing. The product for Instabug was global from the first day, but the process of moving Instabug to the US was really a long, hectic process. We spent a really good amount of time and effort learning about the legal system. So actually we spent weeks and weeks and tons of money to incorporate Instabug in the US. And that's why the product was for free for a full year before incorporating the company in the US and started accepting payments. Many companies shut down and closed because they didn't have the funds. We wasted time and money on things that could be handled in an easier way. So, so this is this is a real problem. Maybe not here. It's actually not a problem here. Um, but this is a real problem for entrepreneurs around the world. And guess what? Like, we all know that GDP growth is actually going to come from most of those countries that we're talking about here in the next 10, 20, 30 years, right? So there's lots of cool stuff that's going to happen by these people. So our aim is to enable entrepreneurs around the world. And so basically, what we did is we launched um, Atlas a month ago at the Mobile Web Congress, Mobile World Congress, sorry, in Barcelona. And so what Atlas is, is basically, you can see it as an API, that enables you to open an entity for now in the US, I'll talk about that a little later, um, open a bank account in the US, get access to legal and tax advices from partners in the US that we have there, including Oric and Price, uh, PwC, and also have a Stripe account, which you might want to use or not. <laughs> um, that's Atlas. Um, I'll give you a demo just afterwards. Now, the reason why um, Atlas is still in beta today, officially, is that we started off doing that for the US. Like, let's start somewhere. Let's see if this product actually has attraction and if people are interested. We were pretty sure it would have. Um, but the idea is to actually expand this functionality to be able to give the possibility for entrepreneurs to open up entities in other regions of the world, uh, for example, Europe or APAC. Um, and that's all, those are already discussions we're having in some of those regions to get that going. So the US is kind of a first step here. Now, very quick demo of how this works, just to show you how easy it is. So you're basically sitting you know, in Chile, in Costa Rica, in Honduras, wherever. I think this case is a Honduras case. And you go on the Stripe website, you just click a button to, um, and you have five steps. Uh, number one, create a Stripe account. You know, you might want to use it or not. Number two, just tell us a little bit about your product and your website. Tell us about your company, a few words. Stripe, um, step three, um, tell us about the actual company. Like, is this a new company you want to incorporate in, in the US or is it like just a subsidiary of an existing company? How many shares are you talking about? Um, what's the actual um, business address you have like in your own country like Sri Lanka or Honduras? And um, so this one is Honduras. And then what's, what's the team? Like who are the f like people who actually you know, are going to have equity in this company? And the final thing is like just you know, tell us who you want to have, you know, who's the administrator of the bank account that we're going to set up for you. Right? It's as easy as that. It's, it's a, you know, it's a five, ten minute kind of process. And basically what this does is, you know, in a matter of days, you actually have a U.S. company set up with a bank account and a Stripe account to be able to sell all over the world, like, without having moved from your desk in Sri Lanka, right? Um, and so that's Atlas. Um, I'll just, two things, uh, well, actually, one, yeah, one thing I'll add to all this is, um, um, we launched this product with exactly what I told you we had in mind. What we hadn't really realized beforehand and what we realized afterhand when we saw so many signups going on was that there's actually another use case for this product, which is um, companies that are in, let's say, easier markets to be in, like you know Europe, etc., who actually want to open up operations in the U.S. or like the day we have this you know, available, you know, for other countries or jurisdictions than the US, like this could essentially become a platform to help, you know, new businesses open up entities and operations to go for other markets, right? 
And again, we're not solving ev everything, right? We're not solving for visas, et cetera. But it's kind of just making what theoretically is feasible even more easy to do. You get uh, automatically when you get enrolled, you are also a taxpayer. And then yeah, so, you so, can so when you set up an entity in the US, you receive a, I don't remember what it's called, IRS number, or I don't know what it's called. Um, and we do that for you. And then, you know, you pay taxes as if you would need to pay taxes normally, right? Um, I mean, yeah. Like and you do it for any illicit object, or do you exclude some type of business? I'm just saying, I want so, to open an online casino in the US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so how do you provide um, terrorist organizations or weapons organizations to use this thing to set up entities wherever they want? Um, that's a good question. Um, so there's, there's two things to that. One is, I mean, as you guys can see, we tried to make it super simple. Um, actually, there's stuff happening in the background and like all the checks and rules that need to be true and validated and checked before actually opening an entity, a bank account, etc., are actually done in the background with the information that we asked for, right? And so Silicon Valley Bank is the bank that partners with us on this. And so you would get a Silicon Valley Bank bank account. Um, you know, they would, they, would, um, they would do all the kind of KYC compliance checks that they would normally do if someone wanted to set up a bank account. So, you know, part of that is, you know, checking, I mean, I don't want to get too technical here, but checking OFAC terrorist lists and all those UN blacklists and all those things. So we're not like, we're not circumventing any rule, right? We're doing things um, in the proper way, but ju we're just trying to make it easier um, for the person on this, on this side of the screen to do it. That's point one. And point two is, um, We've also built a, a network of more than 100 um, partners across the world. Um, those partners are kind of trusted third party partners um, who can also refer some of those companies to us, which actually helps in the process, right? So we, like, um, we have partners in basically every country in the world, like, I don't know, Startup Chile is kind of the incubator there, and then there's, you know, um, Kenya, whatever the name is, et cetera, et cetera. And so those people can also refer to, you know, startups to make it even, even quicker. Hi, uh, I just wanted to ask, do I have to have a company in my home country so that I could apply to this, or could I just start a new company on Stripe right away? Or at least not. Yeah. Um, you, can, you can start a new company. Like, you don't need to have a company in your own country. Now, this is something we, we, we want to be, I mean, we want to be careful with that because this is not a product to incentivize people from, you know, not starting a company in like the country where they are. So depending on the country where they come from, like we try to uh, check, you know, where, you know, what's the reason, right? You know, you see, uh, I mean, yeah, you get the point. Uh, so I was wondering, so this doesn't qualify you to get any visa, right? Right. Not yet. No. No. Um, <laughs> no. No. Actually. Actually. Um, let me develop on this. Um, I, I. You know. You're all aware that. Um, um, for example, France has. Uh, you know. Uh, amazing programs. Um, the French Tech Hub. Um, for example, who like, have been designed to support French entrepreneurs going abroad in the U.S. For example, right? They have a hub in San Francisco. They have a hub in New York, etc. And what they provide like, is actually like, help with visas, help with finding a co-working space, help with you know, um, you know, finding sometimes some first users, et cetera, right? This is, this is complementary to that, right? Like, okay, this is so only a product piece. Stripe is focused on the product Doesn't side. replace the E2 visa or the L1? No, no, this doesn't replace okay. all that. Um, okay. It's actually, yeah, complementary. Um, I'm not sure you, you mentioned it, but uh, what will be the price of this product? Yeah, so um, the price the price for this service is um, what it costs us, which is roughly $500. Um, and I mean, that's to be compared to you know, the, the cost it would have you, to, you, to you to actually fly to the US and you know spend two weeks there and have great chats with bankers and IRS and all those people. Um, so yeah, this is, we're not making money on this. Thank you. Good luck on